Good day, Internet. I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com. Nearly four years ago, I made a video called The Mossberg Shockwave is Mostly Useless. And a whole lot of people really, really hated that video. If you're brave enough to wade through the comments there, you will find Shockwave fans questioning my competence, my intelligence, and even my manhood. But that's okay, you kind of expect that with any kind of negative product review, especially with a title like that one. I've been thinking about this for a long time, and today I want to revisit this topic because my opinion of the Shockwave has actually changed quite a bit over the last couple of years. That goes for not just the Shockwave itself, but the whole category of stockless, short-barreled shotguns with the bird's head style grip. Uh, these are classified uh, legally as firearms, but I'm gonna call them stockless shotguns because that's what they are. I got three demo guns I'll be working with today. The first is a 20 gauge Mossberg 590 Shockwave with a Swamp Fox red dot on a rifle height mount. It also has an S-Tac seven round shell carrier with Velcro attachment, an XS big dot front sight, and a demonstrated concepts recoil strap. The second gun is a 12 gauge semi-auto Remington V3 TAC-13. It has the same recoil strap and Swamp Fox dot as the Mossberg, and I'm using a four round shell carrier from S-Tac. And finally, we have a 12 gauge Mossberg 590 Shockwave Nightstick. This one is pretty much completely stock except for the Crimson Trace laser saddle. Before I get into why I started to warm up to these guns, I wanna go back and summarize the issues that I went over in that original video. And I wanna be clear that uh, both then and now, I am looking at these things in the context of personal defense, especially inside the home. If you just wanna have fun with them out at the range, that is a completely different perspective, and I'm not really touching on that today. In the defense context, what it really comes down to for me is that the benefit of their small size is not worth the trade-off of making them more difficult to shoot than a traditional shotgun. You can fire them from the hip, but it's difficult to know for sure what you're aiming at, unless you're using a laser sight, but we'll come back to that later. If you're just chucking a wide patterning butt shot or bird shot out there, it's not all that hard to get some pellets on target, but it's also really easy to throw some pellets off target. We are accountable for every one of those pellets, so filling the air with lead and hoping for the best is not an acceptable home defense strategy. The other common technique is to hold the gun out in front of you, almost the same position it would be if you did have a shoulder stock. That way you can actually aim the gun properly. I much prefer this approach, but it's still a pretty clumsy way to shoot. Recoil control is difficult. Cycling the action's kind of awkward on the pump actions. It's not the worst way to use the gun, but compared to a traditional shotgun, it just feels slow and inconsistent, especially when you're trying to aim the gun under any kind of time pressure. It's not that these guns are unusable or that there is no benefit to their size. It's just that they're, you're making a pretty questionable trade-off. The short overall length does make the gun easier to maneuver in some very specific circumstances that might be relevant to you, but without a shoulder stock, it's almost guaranteed you are gonna be worse at actually hitting your target and only your target. That pretty much sums up my assessment of these things from four years ago when I did that initial review. And that was more or less the consensus opinion among shotgun instructors and other dedicated shotgun users that I know. If you were serious about the defensive use of shotguns, the shockwave and guns like it were kind of seen as a joke or at best a very niche tool for only the most accomplished shotgunners and maybe some special tasks like door breaching. So what changed? Well, if you're a regular viewer, you probably already know the answer to that. What changed is that I had some conversations with the tactical space wizard known as Rhett Neumayer of Demonstrated Concepts. Rhett is the heretical lunatic behind the cheek pistol concept that I talked about a few months ago. But before he started working on that, he developed some techniques for shooting these bird's head grip shotguns. Rhett's technique looks pretty similar to that last one, but instead of extending the gun out in front, you bring it back so the grip is right at your cheek. This has several advantages. It gives you a third point of contact that acts as an index point to help you aim more consistently. You don't have to hunt for the sight or the bead. It's right there in front of you every time, just like it would be with a traditional shoulder stock. 
Another advantage is better recoil control versus having the gun pressed out here. If you're familiar with the push-pull technique for traditional shotguns, Rhett uses something similar he calls push clench. So you push forward on the forend with your support hand. With the primary hand, you put pressure down and in. You think about rotating the elbow in towards your body. And that's the direction the force should be going, but depending on your wrist mobility, your elbow might actually end up pointing more out than down. I usually have kind of a chicken wing thing going on here when I do this. It looks weird, but I promise it really does work. One of the keys to making this work is the recoil strap. Rhett came up with this idea. Uh, it's just a basic nylon strap with a cord and some Velcro. You can buy them at demonstratedconcepts.com or on Amazon. The technique does work without the strap, but then you're really depending more on grip strength alone to manage recoil and it's a little less effective. Rhett also uses a light or a hand stop on the forend. He presses the web of his hand into that hand stop, and that's another point of recoil control. Either way, it feels a lot different than managing recoil with a shoulder stock. You will get some rearward movement of the gun. You kind of just have to let it happen. It's important to position the gun so that it recoils alongside your face and not into your face. I have just the tips of my fingertips and my thumb just barely touching my cheek and my chin so I can get a repeatable index. I am not pressing it into my cheek the way I would with a traditional stock. I have tried this with just a bead sight and with a red dot on a low mount and on a higher mount like I've got on this one. I've gone back and forth a couple of times, but I think the higher mount works better for me. I can find the dot a little quicker and it's more comfortable. That's something you might wanna just experiment with. I would also suggest starting out with low recoil loads. I rarely use anything but low recoil birdshot and buckshot for all my shotgun practice anyway. Low recoil double aught buck consistently penetrates at least 20 inches in ballistic gel. That is more than enough for defensive use. Even if you prefer full power loads, I would save those until after you've gotten the hang of the cheek shooting technique with some of the lighter stuff. There's a lot more nuance to this technique that I'm still figuring out. Rhett is still experimenting with it and it continues to evolve over time. He's got plenty of details and tips in his videos on YouTube and Instagram if you want a real deep dive on that. The real test for something like this is to use an objective measurable standard. So I decided to use the four stage home defense shotgun skills test that I came up with last year. I ran it with the Shockwave and with the TAC-13. I also ran it with the Beretta 1301 and the old Winchester 120 Ranger. It turns out that what made a bigger difference was not stock versus no stock, it was semi-auto versus pump action. If we compare them by action type, the times are very close. The only place there was a significant difference was on the reload stage. I fumbled a bit with the Winchester, so my time there was on the slower side. The Beretta just has superior ergonomics and I've got a ton of time behind that gun, so I was a little faster on that one. What's important to note here is that the Shockwave and the TAC-13 slowed me down very little in terms of sight acquisition and recoil control. That's not gonna be the case for everyone, especially the first time they try the technique, but this should give you an idea of what's possible after putting in a few hours of practice. So if the cheek shooting technique, practically speaking, allows me to shoot a stockless shotgun almost as well as a traditional shotgun, that raises an important question. Why don't I just use stockless shotguns all the time? Well, there are a few reasons, but for me, the big one is that a gun with a stock is just more comfortable to shoot. That's not to say the stockless shotguns are painful. It's not like getting beat up by a Magnum snub nose revolver. A better word would be fatiguing. The push clinch technique just kind of starts to wear me out after a couple of boxes of shells. So I have to cut down my practice sessions a little shorter than I would if I was working with a stocked gun. For my actual home defense gun, I don't plan on switching over to a bird's head shotgun at this point, but it is something I would consider if I lived in a home with a lot of tight corners and hallways, or if I believed I was at real high risk of being attacked in my vehicle, 
or if I wanted to travel discreetly with something more capable than a handgun. That's a big change from how I felt about these guns before I was clued into Rhett's technique. Before I get into some hardware issues, I wanna briefly cover hip firing with a laser sight. This is something several people mentioned in response to that first Shockwave video. Crimson Trace makes this thing they call the laser saddle. It fits onto the receiver and the emitter is uh, right here behind the ejection port. Uh, I had planned to do some testing with this setup, but the gun broke. Before I got through the first box of shells, I started having some problems with ejection. It turns out one of the two extractors had broken in half on this brand new shockwave. We ordered a replacement, so maybe I'll try that again sometime in the near future. For now, I can't really comment much on hip firing. So far, it feels kind of slow and clumsy, even with the laser but my experience is pretty limited. I might change my mind if I spent more time with it. Uh, on the Shockwave itself, I'm not really surprised I had an issue with it. A lot of you guys were skeptical when I mentioned a few months back that Mossbergs are not quite what they used to be. This is a perfect example. Most of them are fine, some of them are not, and the percentage of not fine guns appears to be on the rise. If you really want a pump action, bird's head grip style gun, you might instead consider a Remington TAC-14 based on the Model 870. Now that might come as a surprise because as I've mentioned many times, Remingtons have been very rough for the past several years, but they are under new ownership now and I'm hearing some encouraging reports about the most recent batches of Remington 870s. They are apparently better than they have been in a very long time. Both the TAC-14 and the Shockwave are going for about $500 right now. Between the two, I would take my chances with the Remington. It also looks like the new management at Remington is gonna start making semi-autos again, including the TAC-13. I've been told they are on the dealer price list and can be ordered, but there's no official date for when they will actually ship. The TAC-13 has been out of production since sometime in 2020, and they've been really difficult to find lately. Used ones are sometimes selling for over two grand, when the new ones start shipping, I would expect them to be priced roughly half that. If you can wait and it's in your budget, I would go with the TAC-13 over the pump actions. Cheek shooting a semi-auto is much, much easier than a pump. A pump will make you work twice as hard and running the action manually is gonna be less reliable than the semi-auto action. The Black Aces Tactical Pro Series S is a tempting option. They cost about as much as the pump actions, but they're semi-auto. I have not shot one, so I can't say much about them, but just be aware they are made in Turkey. At least a dozen different Turkish gun makers have flooded the market with cheap shotguns the last couple of years. They are generally not considered very robust. I know Rhett has tried a few of them and some have worked better than others. If you're not gonna put thousands of shells downrange, and you just want to try out the stockless shotgun concept with a semi-auto, they're probably not a bad deal. Just have realistic expectations. All right, guys, that is all I've got for now. I hope you found it helpful. The next time you need some ammo, be sure to get it from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.